Our scripture readings today are found in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verses 6 through 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Contentment is the state of being mentally or emotionally satisfied with things just the way they are. Instead of focusing on what's missing, learn to appreciate what's there. Over the past few, few years, I've come to the conclusion that our society lives in a constant state of discontentment. We're not happy with our leaders, with our family, with our job or the things we have. Our house is too small, our car and TV are both older models, and our smartphone doesn't have the latest 5G technology. We're not content with what we have, so we try to fill the void in our lives with ever more possessions or money, but they never satisfy. Why can't we seem to find the contentment that we're looking for? It's important to remember that happiness and contentment are not the same. They are not interchangeable. Happiness is an emotional high. It's due to circumstances. Uh, it's temporary. It's fleeting. Contentment lies deeper than just emotions and is based on our state of mind, our attitude. True contentment comes from knowing you're at the center of God's will and you have a personal relationship with Him. Tom Brady, popular, wildly successful NFL quarterback, once said, after winning his third Super Bowl, Man, I feel like there's got to be something more than this. Well, in the world's eye, this statement wouldn't make much sense. He's popular, successful, incredibly rich, and has achieved so much in his career, yet he wrestles with an internal dissatisfaction and belief that still isn't enough to satisfy him. After saying these words, Brady went on to win three more Super Bowls with the New England Patriots and one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a total of seven Super Bowls. Brady retired in February of this year, 2022, but just a few weeks later announced that he was coming back to settle some unfinished business, ending, of course, his brief retirement. Tom Brady is proof of someone having it all and still being unsatisfied. The French philosopher Blaise Pascal said, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man, which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the Creator, made known through Jesus Christ. Wealth, possessions, and success in themselves are not inherently bad things. The Bible never says that it's a sin to be rich. There are examples of, uh, in the scriptures of God blessing his servants with tremendous material wealth. But the Bible also warns us against pursuing riches in Proverbs 23, 4 and Matthew 6, 19. When we choose to be content with the riches of Christ rather than pursue material riches, our lives will be more in line with God's desire for us. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, 21. Because contentment is about recognizing God's place in our life and being at the center of His will, when circumstances are beyond our control, we can still find peace. 
The Apostle Paul suffered countless imprisonments, hardships, beatings, and loss. Yet he was able to say, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him, Christ, who gives me strength. At a small New England fishing village, an American businessman stood and watched as a fisherman unloaded his catch. He commented and called out on the quality of the fish and asked the fisherman how long it took to catch them. Not very long, answered the fisherman. Well, then why didn't you stay out longer and catch more, asked the businessman. The fisherman explained that his small catch was sufficient to meet his needs and those of his family. The businessman asked, but what do you do with the rest of your time? Oh, I sleep late, fish a little, play with my children, and take a nap with my wife when I get home. In the evenings, I go into the village to see my friends. I play the guitar and sing a few songs. I have a full life. The businessman interrupted him. Sir, let me help you. I have an MBA from Harvard, and I can give you some excellent advice. You should start by fishing longer every day. You can then sell the extra fish you catch with the extra revenue you'll make. You could buy a bigger boat. And with the extra money the larger boat will bring, you can buy a second one and then a third boat and so on until you have an entire fleet of fishing trawlers. Then instead of selling your fish to a middleman, negotiate directly with the processing plants and maybe even open your own plant. You can then leave this little village and move to Los Angeles or even New York City. From there, you can direct your huge enterprise. How long would that take, asked the fisherman. Oh, 20, maybe 25 years, replied the businessman. Fisherman asked, and after that? Well, afterwards, oh, that's when it gets really interesting, said the businessman, laughing. When your business gets really big, you can start selling stocks in it and make millions. The fisherman responded, Millions, really? And after that? The businessman took a deep breath and answered, Well, I guess after that you'll be able to retire, live in a tiny village near the coast, sleep late, play with your children, catch a few fish, take naps with your wife, and spend your evening seeing your friends, playing the guitar, and singing a few songs. You can have a full life. Contentment isn't an excited kind of happy. It's more like a peaceful ease of mind, an attitude of gratitude. People are always looking for more and always forgetting about what they already have. Sometimes the greenest grass is right beneath our feet. Always appreciate what you have. Because there's always someone out there who wishes they had what you have. And also remember that someone else is happy with a lot less than what you have. Instead of focusing on what's missing, learn to appreciate what's there. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all the blessings you have given to me. I'm grateful for each and every one of them. Most importantly, I want to thank you for being close to me as I live out my life. You supply my every need, and in you I find contentment. In Jesus' name, amen. Leave you with these points to ponder. Ask yourself, what lies am I believing that are leading me away from being content in this moment? And if I do get the item I really want, will it truly make me content? Am I content?